The advantages and disadvantages of playing 21. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Street Ball Strategy. I'm jumping and dumping. Had to stop the percussion. It's scary, but stop with the pumpkins. I've had enough of the lunch. You're sitting with all the suits corrupted. Telling me you're like a bee. I erupted. Trying to stop this. Now I watch this. Today we're talking about playing a form of basketball where it's everybody against everybody, every individual player against all other individual players. There are no teams in this form of basketball. And I know that in different neighborhoods, in different cities, there's probably different names for games like these. There's certainly different rules for it, but where I'm from, it was called 21. The first player to score 21 points wins. Now my friends and I would use 21 as a warm-up game, so every day we'd come up to the court, the first game we would usually always play would be 21. And it would get to the point where it would become so competitive, even though it was a warm-up game, that subsequent games of 21 would have to be then played because someone would win, and then someone else would want to run it back so they could win, and then they would win, and then someone else would want to run it back again, and so we would end up playing multiple games of 21 on most days, it was one of the most uh, common games we played, though we played mostly team ball, but you know, it was very comparable to how often we played 21. So today we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of playing 21 and how you can deal with those in order to help you be as successful as you can playing everybody against everybody. The first obvious advantage of playing 21 is you don't have any teammates. Everything is on you. All of your scoring, all of your rebounding, all of your defending, and every possession that you get of the basketball depends on what you do or don't do. This is going to force you to have to be more of an all-around player because you don't have any teammates to depend on to pass you the ball. You also don't have any teammates to help you get open, so everything you do from getting possession of the ball off of a rebound or steal or loose ball to how you score, everything's dependent on you. So in situations where it is everybody against you, you're gonna have to have an overall, you know, all around game in order to be able to score so you can be successful. This of course doesn't include passing, but in terms from a offensive standpoint, you can't just be a jump shooter because if you're just a three point shooter, eventually, if even if like from the beginning if just one person is defending you and you start shooting threes and you start making those threes then you'll have another person come out and another person come out and before before you know it you'll be like double and triple teamed on three point line not able to shoot that three so now you have to be able to get to the basket you have to be able to drive and finish at the basket you just can't be a three point shooter and then when you get to the basket there's probably going to be people at the basket ready to meet you and challenge you at the rim as well so you not only you need to be able to finish with either hand whether that means layups pull-ups floaters whatever it may be you need to be able to score from any place on the court because you know you'll come into uh, situations where maybe they'll be overloading on the left side or the right side so you'll have to go either direction and they'll learn to start forcing you to one hand or the other where they notice that you're more uncomfortable right so you have to get on you so you have to get comfortable either side of the court going driving to either side of the court you have to be able to score three point mid-range and at the basket because they're going to force you to do the stuff they notice that you're uncomfortable doing which is going to force you to have to be an all-around score the second advantage is it allows you to scout your opponents. It allows you an opportunity that you don't usually have, which is you get to study and scout every player on the court, at least you know, at that time. I'm sure you know, other, you know, in the future, other players may show up and you obviously can't scout them. But for that 21 game, everyone that's playing in that game of 21, you get to study and scout all of those players. But keep in mind, they're going to be doing the same thing to you but they're gonna be probably doing it in a more casual way because remember, you're probably the more serious player. You're taking this more seriously. So to them, they're sort of just watching you trying to learn like what makes you uncomfortable and what kind of obvious weaknesses you have and then use them against you in that game of 21. But for you, you should be taking it way further, way beyond that. You should be scouting each player, using this opportunity to understand as much as you possibly can, learn as much as you can about every player on the court, and then 
using that, applying that in the future to whatever team games then arrive. Like if you're if the next game you play, you're gonna you're gonna pick teams. Well, now you have a better idea of who you want on your team and who you don't want on your team. You have a better idea of that than anybody else on the court because you took studying and scouting those players more serious than everybody else did. The third advantage of 21 Everybody Against Everybody is it forces you to have to plan. You have to become a planner because if you're playing 21 and you have a single defender on you, right? You have to plan and figure out how you're gonna get past that first defender. But when you do that, somebody else is just gonna step up in their place, right? So now you have to plan, okay, I'm gonna get past this guy. How am I gonna do that? When I get past him, where is the next defender going to come from? What direction are they gonna come from? What direction am I gonna be going? Uh, what kind of resistance are they gonna give me when I get to them, right? You have to plan for all of that and it, it's gonna be a matter of improvising as well. So you can only plan so much because you can't control what the next defender and the next defender are going to do against you. Since you can't control that, you're gonna have to improvise what you're going to do when you meet those next defenders. That's why practice is so important. When you're practicing, you need to throw in as many variables, as many modifications as you possibly can think of when you're practicing a different move sets, different skills. The more you improvise, the more you practice that, uh, you know, modifications on whatever move or skill you're working on in practice, the more second nature that becomes in games like this where you have to improvise over and over and over again you want it to be second nature. You want it to be something that you don't have to think about, something that just sort of happens and is effective when it calls for it. It's that practice, those days, weeks, months of practice that you put in prior to these games that allow you to, that's the sort of the planning that takes place in the improvisation that you're gonna use when it comes to these games of 21. Lastly, when it comes to the advantages of playing 21 is it, it can allow you to set the tone for the rest of the day. For instance, when I was playing 21 uh, against strangers, right? I tried, to, when I, at least when I became an intermediate player from a beginner, once I got to intermediate and higher, I wanted to set the tone that these players that don't know me I wanted them to, I wanted it to be obvious that I was a serious player. I meant business out here. I wasn't laughing, I wasn't joking around, I'm not even talking, I'm certainly not talking trash. I'm just out here focused, trying to show them, prove to them that I'm a serious player out here and I mean business. What's more rare than that, however, is sort of setting the tone in kind of a deceptive way, which is not often you know, can be used, but if you find the right players on the right day in the right circumstances, the way you could sort of be deceptive in setting the tone is, say you want, you, you don't know these players, they don't know you, and you want to set the tone that you, you make it, you want to make them feel, you want to make them think that you are intimidated, right? You don't have as much confidence in yourself and your game as you actually really do. The reason you would want to do this is so that later on when you start playing the team games, that's when you can kind of flip the script, come out of your shell and reveal that yes, you can play. You are a capable, effective player. Uh, the reason you may want to do this is because, again, with some players in some situations, that may leave more of an impact on them than if you were just trying to from the very start being a super intense, serious player. Again, when you're talking about outdoor recreational basketball, a lot of it comes down to what is your reputation? Like, how do people, strangers, how do they think of you, feel you know, feel about your game? How, what kind of impression do you make on them? If you come out here from the very beginning, like the very first game of 21, and you set the tone that you're a super serious player, maybe that impacts them, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, then they're not really gonna remember you and you haven't established much of a reputation. Now, the reason this is rare is because there is a big downside to trying this. If you try to do this and fail, then you've wasted, you've wasted a day, you know, in, in sort of trying to 
uh, use a strategy that never really panned out and it's kind of a waste of a whole day because you didn't establish any kind of reputation. If anything, you just made yourself forgettable to a bunch of strangers. But as you get more and more experience, you will start to recognize that, okay, with this group of players, this group of strangers, there might actually be a chance for me to use that kind of tone to make more of an impact. But be careful because you don't want to waste too many days trying to set that kind of tone, make that kind of impact if you mess it up or if it's just the wrong you know, group of players. Two major disadvantages to playing 21. The first being that you could very well establish some selfish tendencies as a basketball player. Remember, you don't just want to be the king of everybody against everybody basketball. Hopefully, and more importantly, you want to be the king of team basketball as well. And just as humans and as players, if you play enough 21, our minds are just going to sort of adapt to whatever we're used to the most. And if you play a lot of 21, you could get yourself into the mindset of being a, a selfish player, someone that's not used to having teammates, doesn't need teammates, doesn't want teammates, because you sort of just like assimilated to the fact of like, I play individual basketball because I play these everybody against everybody games so often. You don't want to flip that sort of selfish individual everybody against everybody switch and then not be able to turn it back down when it's time to play team basketball. And that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for success. How can we be most successful uh, regardless of what kind of basketball we're playing, be it everybody against everybody or be it teams. In 21, you don't have any choice, but you have to score. You have to do it all yourself. But when it comes to team play, now it's about how can you help your teammates to be successful? What can you do to participate in that team element to help elevate your teammates? Don't let that sort of me against everybody attitude leak into how you play team basketball. And when you come out to the park and we're talking about outdoor recreational basketball, like you want to have as many people want you to be on their team for as many good, you know, impactful reasons as possible. But if you set the tone as being a selfish player because that's what you're used to doing from playing so much 21, you're only hurting yourself in the long run. The second major disadvantage of playing 21 is it can allow you to become lazy. It, it can teach you lazy tendencies. Because really in 21, you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to compete. Just because you're in the game doesn't mean you have to try. You can get super lazy. That can be anything from like not really participating at all and just sort of standing around though what's the point of even being in the game at that point but like offensively the the lazy version of playing 21 lazily is just by standing back and when you happen to find the ball in your hands you just start jacking up three pointers because if you're just jacking up three pointers, that doesn't, that means you don't really have to try. You don't really have to plan. You don't really have to put any effort into your game. You just get the ball in the three point line, throw it at the basket and hope for the best. What I think is even more common, the most common lazy attribute when it comes to playing games like 21 is just not playing defense, right? Cause you don't have to play defense. Like somebody's gonna play defense. It doesn't have to be you. Every Technically, everybody on the court is technically guarding the one person with the ball. And usually one person will go out on the perimeter and guard whoever has the ball. And then if that person drives to the basket, if they get to the basket, then everybody else who's standing down by the basket will just collapse on that player. But technically, you don't have to play any defense. You don't have to do anything at all on defense. And a lot of players will just sort of use that as an excuse of like, oh, I'm saving myself, my energy, my legs. I'm saving that for the games, the team games. Those are the ones that matter. Those are the ones that players usually deem to be the most important. So they don't really try. They don't really put out energy or effort especially on defense in 21 because nobody you know it doesn't matter it doesn't count so they don't really try and they use that as an excuse to be lazy 
if you play so much 21 and you work your way into that mindset of I can just sort of be and get lazy on defense in 21, is that going to carry over leak into how you play team ball as well? For me, as a player, my perspective always was, and it's something that I thought about on a regular, probably like a weekly basis, was I don't want to waste any opportunities. I don't want to be an old man one day and have the regrets of, oh, I, would, I wish I would have played more basketball, or I wish I would have played harder when I did play basketball. You know, my attitude when I was playing was like, Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Like I could injure myself today and not be out here tomorrow or for weeks or months. And if I'm injured and off the court like that, I'm gonna be thinking to myself, man, I wish I could be on the court. Or man, I wish when I was on the court, I would have played more or I would have played harder. So for me, when I played 21, it was just all out all the time. It was never take a possession off. It was, you know, if I have the ball in my hand, not only am I'm, I'm gonna find the best way to score in any given situation, I'm gonna learn from those situations, I'm gonna improvise when I need to, I'm gonna remember how I did that so I can do it even more effectively next time, and then defensively, I was the guy who like, I'm guarding everybody. Like every, whoever gets the ball, I'm gonna be on the perimeter, I'm gonna guard them, I'm gonna get in their face, I'm gonna try to get a steal because because since I'm a shorter player, I'm 5'8", right, and I don't jump higher than the average player, it, there's not really many opportunities, especially the more players you have playing in the games of 21, the more players there are, the less opportunity it is for you to get the basketball. And because I'm not a strong rebounder, I can't just depend that I'm gonna, you know, get rebounds and get possession of the ball and then be able to score from that. My attitude was, I'm just gonna go get the ball. Whoever has the ball, I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go steal it. I'm gonna go first force a turnover, whatever I can to get myself possession of the ball because I can't, I can't wait or depend on the chance that I might get a rebound. I have to go get it. So I was defending everybody all the time and doing it hard, forcing turnovers, getting up in their face, trying to make them uncomfortable. So fortunately, I never sort of fell into the trap and the bad habits of getting lazy you know, when it came to playing 21. Hopefully you don't do that either, and hopefully, you know, while you don't have to hustle as hard as I did when I played 21, hopefully at least you don't waste the opportunities to learn and engage when it comes to playing these everybody versus everybody games. Two quick points to round out this discussion of 21. The first being beware of injuries. Because it's everybody against everybody, because you know everybody could be running down loose balls or fighting for rebounds, you know, more so even than in team games, that makes 21 potentially more chaotic than your average team game. The more chaotic uh, a game is, the higher potential there is for injury to happen. That's one of the reasons I drill down so hard on this channel in terms of fundamentals, learning, mastering your fundamentals, especially when it comes to footwork. Because in games like 21, when it's everybody against everybody and it can get really chaotic, the better your footwork is and the better you can sort of improvise on the fly to what you need to do, the more you can sort of, you know, adapt to a given situation because you have good solid footwork the less likely it is that you're gonna find yourself in a compromising situation where injury is more than likely to happen. Now obviously freak accidents can happen to anybody at any given time, but it's you're sort of playing the odds, right? You're lessening the odds as much as you possibly can when you have those strong fundamentals so that you know when and how to place your feet, you know when and how to land when you jump, you're, you, you give yourself better awareness. So like if you're going up for a rebound and you're up in the air with multiple people trying to get that rebound, the better your fundamentals are, you will know how to land in a way and in a space where it's less likely that you're gonna land on somebody's ankle and twist your ankle in the process and end up hurting yourself or come to, or like land wrong from a jump and like tweak your knee in a way that you're not used to. It's less likely that it happens if you have better fundamentals. 
The second point kind of falls under that umbrella, which is when you're playing 21, especially if you happen, if you were playing subsequential games and you, you're, you know, everybody's playing hard, it's very likely that you, it's going to become physically draining. Like my friends and I would use games of 21 to warm up, but it would become so competitive, we'd end up playing four or five games of 21 in a row, and by the time we were done, we'd be tired, or at least they would be tired, not me. Uh, but when you're tired like that, physically drained from playing 21, and it's as chaotic as it can possibly be, injuries are more likely to happen when your body is just fatigued. So just be aware, if your approach to 21, everybody against everybody, if it's the same kind of approach that I have, where it's, if, it's, if there's an opportunity for me to play hard, I'm gonna play hard, regardless of what kind of game it is. If that's your approach, then you're gonna need physical conditioning in order to not you know not lose breath not run out of breath and not have your energy decline as much as other people's energy as you go throughout the day so if you're going to play 21 especially multiple games on one single day make sure you are you know have at the forefront of your mind when you're practicing when you're training get your physical basketball conditioning up get your vo2 max up make sure that you have as much control over your body as often as possible. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you think it's going to help you moving forward playing games of 21, playing everybody against everybody, if it's gonna give you advantages moving forward in those kinds of games, then please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you hit that thanks button down below. When you do, not only does that directly support the channel, but every comment you make commenting on this video, letting me know what your strategy is to playing the best everybody against everybody games that you can play. Every comment that you make is going to be highlighted as well, making it stand out from everybody else's. So everybody that hits that thanks button know I genuinely appreciate it. As always, like, share, comment like I said. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any video goes live on this channel. And until then, I'll see you guys next week. This rags the richest stack of figures, small voice in your head telling you you have to listen. That's the way you push pushing past the measures. Uh, they say I couldn't, I did it again. Watch this.